What's up everybody, Gen X Dividend Investor here. Shortly after I started my YouTube channel, I released a simple to follow tutorial video on how to make a stock portfolio spreadsheet using Google Sheets. I'll put a link in the description below to that video, as well as put clickable links in this video. However, I failed to include some useful piece of information in that video that various subscribers have since asked for, so I decided to make this part two video. So in this video, I'll cover things like how I put in business logos in my spreadsheet, how you can track cost basis per share, how you can minimize Google timeout issues that can sometimes happen by using another stock API called iXCloud, etc. So please don't forget to like this video as a simple free way you can thank me for making it, and also consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the bell notification to be notified when I post more videos. Let's start with reviewing my personal dividend portfolio and then the spreadsheet I created. People have been asking for me to share my growth portfolio, but I've resisted as my channel is primarily about dividend investing, so I don't know. Okay, here we are in my portfolio. So let's say you wanted to put a logo in here. Let's say this Johnson & Johnson one. So what you do is you come in and you do insert, image, image and cell, do a Google image search, change a logo, hit return. You see a bunch in here, you select it and then click insert. And then it pops right there. So that's how you put a, a logo in. And then for PE, you just use Google Finance, so Google Finance, the ticker, and then put PE, and it puts it in there. If you want an average weighted PE, what this does is it takes the current PE and multiplies it by your portfolio amount, and you get this. And then if you sum all those up, you get your portfolio's average weighted PE. So then for the annual dividend, I do this command, if is error, AO, then AN. And so if you look at AO, it's over here. And this is where it's automatically pulling it from Finviz. I'll also show you how I can do this without scraping. And here's one I do manually. And so basically, this whole column is pulled automatically from Finviz. And this is what I use to push things manually and to check this flag against this flag. So it checks this column against this one. And I do some conditionals that highlight it. So basically, if you come back here and you look at this annual dividend, so for example, if they, if automatically FinViz determined that they, the dividend was lowered, it would highlight in green and red. And if they raise it for some reason, it would highlight in green. And so I can override this, and I sometimes override it when they announce a raise before FinViz gets it, just so I can see the impact of my portfolio. So like J&J &J in this case, I just put the dividend in here. And so it marks it green because FinViz hasn't identified it yet as having happened. And if you want to look at the conditional formatting, you can just see I have a custom formula right here. So that's how the dividend gets highlighted in green or red based on it scraping FinViz or whatever site that I use. Uh, just as a nice visual way to say that the dividend has changed and I can update my flag. And then to clear it, I actually go in and I can update the flag by going over here and saying, okay, now my manual dividend is equal to my automatic one. So if I put in 4.04, you know, and then I come back here you'll see that it has cleared the flag because now they're the same. And then we have my manual five-year dividend CAGR. I'll show you how that's created in a moment. So these are the different kind of positions I hold and the portfolio value, number of consecutive years, some other things you can look at. So in, for beta, I just do Google Finance, ticker in the beta. And then again, average weighted beta, the same sort of concept where I weight each stock based on its portfolio allocation to calculate the portfolio's average weighted beta. Market cap, I'm pulling from Google Finance, and I'll show you another way you can do that. And I divide it uh, just to get this in kind of billions format, as opposed to dollars. And I have an average weighted market cap. This PE to consider buying, this is something I need to update. This is just a kind of a visual flag that I have that, um, that's column AM, so in my in my um, PE column, what I can do is I have a conditional here, which is checking this column against that other column, and if it's less than or equal to it, it highlights it in green. So basically, this is just a visual indicator that says if the PE is at a certain kind of compelling range, you can highlight to just draw my attention to it, saying it looks like a decent price per earnings value, which is why these are highlighted in green right now. And so I just track these kind of different fields. I think if you guys have followed my videos, you're used to, to most of these. 
this right here is just the amount that I put in that dynamically compares my portfolio to its peak amount it's ever been at. So it's down about 12% right now um, at 1.49 million relative to its highest peak of 1.7 million. And the annual passive income right now is 50,381. And then down here is just how my portfolio is allocated between the various sectors that I'm in. And then down here is a comparison to VU. All right, so then one of the questions was, how do you create cost basis? And so this is kind of what I did. If I wanted to do cost basis for each of my shares of stock, I would basically create something that looked like this. So I would do plus, let's, you know, you can rename this um, to 3M. And then I basically would keep, create these kind of columns within that new tab. So the ticker, the purchase date, the number of shares, the purchase price that you paid, the number of ending shares, the ending portfolio value of the ticker, the average price per share. Um, so these would be the key things. And then each time you do a buy or sell or get a dividend, you just add a new row in there. And then on your master sheet, if you wanted a cost basis, you would just come into here and you'd say um, this equals, and you go to that new tab you just created and you could pick, you know, the last one you did, which is right here. And you hit return, and then it automatically puts that value in here. So that's how on your summary spreadsheet, you could pull in a cost basis per share for each new tab you created, which is just a transactional history of shares that you bought and sold or that dripped. So in this case, I just did an example of, let's say you started with 14 shares and each one was $140. That's where they come up with the purchase price. The ending number of shares, let's say you ended 200, and I'll show you how these adjust. And this is the ending portfolio value, which is basically the number of shares, let's pretend, plus that, that amount you bought. And then your average price per share is your total number of shares uh, divided by how much you paid. Then let's say, so that's kind of the, the starting situation. Then let's say on the next day, you bought another 100 more shares. And then here, it's gonna show you, let's assume they were $160 each, so that's the purchase price. So now since you bought 100 shares, uh, this right here is gonna equal to the number of shares you bought in this transaction plus what you had before. And then the new portfolio value is just gonna be either the previous portfolio value plus the new portfolio value or the net ending number of shares times the share price. And then the average price per share, again, is going to be the ending value divided by the number of shares. Then let's say on this day you did another transaction. Now you bought a thousand shares, so it's really gonna kind of adjust your cost basis. And so we say now it's, we assume it's, you bought them for $30 a piece in this example. So you bought a thousand shares times 30. That's your purchase price for that transaction. That takes you up from 300 shares to 300 plus a thousand or 1300 shares. And now your ending portfolio value is this. And then your price per value goes down significantly because your price per share was so low. And then let's say you get a drip and it drips 0 0.03 shares. Again, it does the purchase price, which is just multiplying them. And then you do, you'll get a new ending number of shares. So 1300.03, your ending portfolio value and your average price per share. So if you wanted to track your cost basis for each share, I would just make a new tab for each of your new shares. And then you just build each row as a new kind of transactional history. And then in your summary sheet, you can just do equals and that cell on that other page to bring it in. So if you had five stocks you want to track, you could do that and you could you know, manage your cost basis. It's kind of an easy way to do that. The other thing um, was if you wanted to calculate your dividend CAGR. So this is kind of the formula. If you want to do a five year, you pick two ranges of time and I'll go to Street Insider. And you can see, for example, in Q1, J and J was at 90 cents per quarter per share. And in five years before that, it was at 66 cents per quarter per share. So you put those two amounts in here and then the formula with five year is going to be this uh, amount of dividend divided by this to the power of one over the number of years, in this case, five years minus one. So this is the formula. If you want to do a 10 year dividend CAGR, then you could pick like 2018 and 2008 or 2020 and 2010 and then here the math would change from to the power of 1 over 10 instead of 1 over 5. So that's how you calculate the dividend CAGR.
As I mentioned in my first video, I like to teach people to fish, which is why I don't just put a copy of my spreadsheet out there for you. So like dividend investing, your knowledge and ability to create and customize spreadsheets starts slow, but then it grows in power the more you do it. However, if you'd like to copy and paste the formulas that I showed in this video rather than pause the video and try to recreate them, then jump into my free dividend discord chat server where I've created a FAQ Google document that lists the spreadsheet formulas in it so you can just copy the text. You can also come on there to ask questions from me as well as to the thousands of other dividend investors on it. I believe it is the number one dividend discord server in the world and our 2155th dividend investor just joined moments ago. There are larger discords out there for stock investing, but none are larger that are focused primarily on dividend investing that I know of. In fact, it is the number one return search term on Google when you type in either dividend server or dividend discord. It points to some Reddit posts that I did. Mine is a free chat server focused on dividend investing and is a place where you can type and or talk real time with other investors, as well as people who are interested in becoming investors. We have folks in there with decades of experience that became millionaires through investing and people who have never invested and are interested to learn and everything in between from teenagers to people in their 70s from all around the world, including Australia, Belgium, Bulgaria, Canada, China, Croatia, Cyprus, England, Finland, Germany, Greece, Israel, Kuwait, Netherlands, Norway, Romania, Singapore, Slovakia, South Africa, Sweden, Switzerland, and others. We have a general chat channel that is basically for normal BSing, and then we have a specific channel for dividend stocks, a channel for non-dividend stocks, and we have investing channels for ETFs and mutual funds, crypto, commodities, and real estate. We also have a channel for talking about your portfolio and watch list, as well as a channel for posting your dynamic sales buys during the day. I've also created a channel for dividend alerts, which automatically posts dividend cuts or increases, which attempts to keep people informed as soon as the information is out there, as well as an automated investing news channel, which posts investing articles as they come out, and an automated channel for breaking world news as it comes out. There are also channels for movies and TV and books, video games, general news, politics, sports, health and fitness, and a Pulse channel, to optionally query people's thoughts on a variety of topics. This way we keep investing separate from other topics. I moderate it to keep topics aligned to channels and to minimize self-promotion or toxic individuals. Feel free to check it out and chat with others, or come and just lurk. You can access it via your browser using the link I'll put in the description of this video, or you can download a smartphone app and type in lowercase k, lowercase k, capital S, lowercase r, 5, capital F, capital Y in the invite field of the app. Of course, none of the information should be taken as financial advice that you act on without doing your own research. Now, I want to give you a heads up. Google seemingly has a timeout bug where if you call their APIs too many times or scrape too many websites, your data can sometimes time out in your spreadsheet with an error. Then eventually it self-corrects when things are less busy. I'm confident that Google will fix that bug at some point in the future via relaxing their timeout or requerying or etc. But for now, I would temper your enthusiasm to scrape a million things in your spreadsheet. However, there is a way I've found around that, and it's via using a different API from a service called IEX Cloud, which is a platform I'm not affiliated with that makes financial data and services accessible to everyone. I'll show you the 101 ways you can use it, then if you're into it, you can research how you can optimize performance or how you can get other functionality, etc. I've just explored the basics myself, so I can't provide too much help beyond what I'm going to show you in this video. And if you're outside the USA, there's another API you want to look into called Alpha Vantage API. I've not used them, but I heard they're oriented for international investors. IEX is free to use if you only pull 50,000 core messages per month as of the time I'm making this video, which is way less than I'd need in my spreadsheet, and then they have pay plans if you want to use more. They limit you to 50 ticker symbols per API connection. You can make multiple connections if you need to consume more than 50 symbols. So you go to ixcloud.io and sign up for a free account. Once they verify your email, you log in and click API tokens and copy the token key, which starts with PK underscore and then you concatenate that token when you call their APIs. So there are two ways you can call their APIs. The easy way, which is using import data, which is a native Google function, and then a more complicated way where you import their JSON. To do that, you have to create a Google script, and I'll show you one I copied from a university computer course, and I'll put that info in the FAQ doc on Discord. If you want to go that route, then I recommend you be somewhat comfortable with programming. So I'll show you IAX now. All right, here we are. So this data is provided by IX Cloud. Here's some kind of relevant URLs. Basically, they have different URLs you can call this cloud.ixapiapis.com. Uh, they also have a sandbox, and then they have a variety of versions that you can use: stable beta, v1, or latest. And then a token they give you. I've hidden mine on here. For example, if you want to pull the company here, in this case, the stock is Apple. 
So if you want to pull back the company name from IAX, you do an import JSON. I'll show you how that works. And then you put in JNJ in the ticker, and then you use your token, which I've hidden here. If you want to pull back the exchange it's on, that's what your import, import JSON looks like. Previous close, it's going to be that kind of import JSON. PE ratio. So again, what it's doing is it's calling, it's putting this uh, in, into the arguments and the token. So in this case, it's pulling Apple, which is right down here in D5, that's what this represents. And then it is looking for the word PE ratio in the, and what kind of pulls back in JSON, it's displaying that here. So that's what the different fields are in here. And then here's year to date, market cap, and I'll put all these in a doc. Week 52 low, week 52 high, change, change percentage, average total volume. And then if you don't want to do import JSON, the simpler thing you can do is just do import data. You have that natively in Google. And so you, again, call their the right API and you put in here the, the ticker in question and your token. And you can pull in dividend pay date that way as well, just using import data. Or if you want to know how much dividends are paying out per share per quarter, um, you can use this one, this last dividend amount. You can also use import data with beta and import data with stock price. So if you want to use import JSON, this command you see here, you actually have to create that Google script. It doesn't, Google hasn't created an import JSON function yet. Okay, so if you want to start it new, we're going to come in and pick a new Google Sheet. All right, and so starting fresh, we're going to say tools, script editor, and this is what it starts with. We're going to copy everything from here, highlight it all, control C, all the way from the very beginning to the very end, come with this new project, paste it, you can see where it comes down to, line 41, and then we're going to save this, you can call it whatever you want import function, save, and you see it's called import JSON. And then you come in here and if you do equals import, you see there it is. And then you can kind of follow this format right here, import JSON, because now you've added that Google script to your, your spreadsheet. Okay, so I'd like to finish this video off with a thought. We were chatting in Discord and someone laughingly said their portfolio was jealous of mine because I was dripping something like 6 shares of O each month. I've said this in other videos but I want to say it again. There are millions of people out there with larger portfolios than me, or probably you, and there are millions of people out there with smaller portfolios than me, and probably you. Remember, most people don't invest. The fact you are watching this video right now puts you ahead of the majority of people because you are actively working to improve your investing knowledge. Look, maybe you have zero dollars invested. You might be facing hard times now. Maybe you lost your job and can't make ends meet. Maybe you had a portfolio and had to sell it to live. That sucks, but you can start over and rebuild. It's never too late. Remember, the only thing that matters right now is if you are making decisions today to better your tomorrow. It doesn't matter if you didn't invest when you were young. Don't let your past limit your future. Make the right decision now, this very second. Whether that's to start working out or to start eating healthier or to start investing or to start that YouTube channel or whatever. Your life can be massively different in just a few years by literally taking one small step the second you stop watching this video. As Bruce Lee once said, to hell with circumstances, create opportunities, change your future, you can do it. I want you to believe in yourself more than I do and I'm 100% confident that you can do whatever you set your mind to. Your past is done and over, now go build your future. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor and these videos are for entertainment, inspiration and educational purposes only. Investing of any kind involves risk. I am only sharing my opinion with no guarantee of gains or losses on investments. Don't use this information without double checking it and talking to someone a lot smarter than me after you completely understand it. So I'll see you in the next video and remember to stay positive, patient, play for the long term, keep investing in great companies, budget reasonably, and win. I know you can do it. Just like I know you can hit the subscribe, like, and bell icons 
share this video with others, and comment below.